because I am back. Welcome to General Hospital MV, my GH after show. Let's cut into it. All right, so I couldn't have picked a worse time to leave for Montreal because you guys know that I have been wanting to see Jeannie Francis back for a long time, since January, and I really wanted to talk about it, so I'm gonna talk about it right now. I loved her return. Obviously, when I got back from my trip, I binge watched all of GH to catch up, and Jeannie killed it. She's just, I don't even know. Her presence on screen is always amazing. I've loved the character for such a long time. So it's nice to see her back on the show and being the ultimate Laura Spencer. Hopefully Laura will be able to figure out that Kevin is not Kevin because these scenes with Ryan are so damn creepy. Like John Lindstrom is playing the hell out of Ryan and he also shared scenes with Felicia last week too, which were really, really good. He, he just, uh, like he sends shivers down my spine. He's so creepy. People are definitely seeing that there's something off about Kevin, but not that he's creepy. Like, I don't know what they're seeing. They're not seeing Kevin, but they're not seeing creepy. Another significant thing that happened last week is that it ended with a J Sam kiss, which y'all know I've been waiting forever to happen as well. So that's kind of how this week started. So let's get started on talking about this week, shall we? So like I said, things got pretty hot and heavy between Jason and Sam at the beginning of this week. They were about to make sweet, sweet love until sweet Alexis interrupted it. Of course, of course someone had to, right? Alexis being Alexis in true form gave Sam a lecture on what it would be like to be with Jason again and Sam didn't want to hear it. However, Sam does decide to put a stopgap on what they were doing. So it's a little frustrating as a Jason fan, but I can kind of see where she's coming from. It wasn't because of Alexis's words or anything. It's mostly to do with Drew and what he's going through. So I see that she doesn't want to focus on a relationship and hurt Drew more than what he's already hurting. This whole slow burn situation with Jason and Sam is super irritating because it's beyond slow burn. I mean, we waited 10 months, 10, since the last Jason kiss. And I get that they need to rebuild a relationship again and Sam needed to find herself. But this is a little bit ridiculous, you know? I mean, it's realistic somewhat, but we are soap opera people. We, we are very impatient. We want our love story now. The reason why I'm so eager for this relationship to begin again is because I know that there's gonna be a whole new dynamic. Back in the day, they were very much the ride or die couple who were always constantly surrounded by danger. And the show has become very tamed ever since those days. And also, Jason and Sam, they have kids now. Their lives are a bit more calm. So it'll be interesting to see if they're still as exciting as they were back then, now in 2018. The GH brand has always been a good mixture of character-driven stories and action-packed stories. And I don't know if it's just because budget restraints and whatnot, but we've lost a lot of the action. So I think the writers are gonna have to figure out a way to bring back some of the action and keep the character-driven stories because don't get me wrong, I love character-driven plots and storylines. I mean, we're seeing really good stuff with Mike's Alzheimer's and Oscar dying, but we need the balance. We need to have, you know, the drama of sadness, but also the drama of, like, intense action. Hopefully the writers get on that, but let's talk about some more character-driven plots. It seems that the writers finally remembered that Alexis was kind of looking into her history for a while. They started mentioning the watch again, and there is some kind of significance with the time 1010. Obviously this has some significance. My first guess is that it would have to do with October 10th or maybe even October 11th because of the preemptions, but it didn't. So now I'm wondering what's going on. Like what is the significance? Hopefully it's something more than Alexis's mom died at 10, 10 p.m. back then and that's just a weird Cassidyne creepy coincidence. I really want this to be significant because if it ends up being something like her mom died at 10, 10 p.m. and then they just never speak of it again. Totally lackluster. Like, make this a big umbrella storyline somehow. Build off of this little thing and turn it into something bigger. And also, we can't forget the main premise of the original story that Alexis is trying to figure out why she chooses bad men all of the time. Let's get back to that, too. We are talking a lot about the Davis girls. Let's talk about one more. Christina is lost. That is her story. It has been her story since she has returned. And it makes total sense given that her family and friends are all sort of thriving in their studies and in their careers and in getting to know themselves and Christina is a bartender and you know on paper the storyline makes total sense it's really good but I feel like the writers don't really know where to go with Christina regardless even I don't know what direction Christina should take or what the writers should take with Christina it's, it's she's a good actress it's a good character she's very flawed she's very smart but where do you go with her she's she's kind of a rebel so 
maybe like I can't even be like should she start a PI business like her sister because I feel like that wouldn't work should she be like a mobster like her dad should she be a lawyer like her like her mom none of it seems to fit her so what will what do you guys think would fit Christina let me know in the comments below the one good thing to come from the story is Christina and Valerie's friendship I love seeing them on screen together again it's good to see Valerie being the sounding board for Christina let's see them hang out a bit more I'll, I'll take that for now until y'all figure out what to do with Christina. This week also brought up the uh, anniversary of Morgan's death. They had a memorial featuring the Spencers and the Corinthuses. They play so well off of each other and it was really nice to see. But of course, it can't be all smiles and rainbows and memories. It has to have a bit of drama. And of course, Ava brought that just by, you know, existing and going to his grave. No one was there except for Kiki. And as you guys know, their relationship is pretty volatile at the moment. Kiki, in no uncertain terms, told her mom to get lost, and Ava is still very bitter about Kiki and Griffin's relationship. By the way, not a fan. Ava is seriously bitter. It's a good thing she's seeing a shrink. Too bad he's a serial killer. Apparently, in the darkest depths of Ava's mind, she wants to kill her daughter, and Ryan seemed to love that, but Ava read Ryan wrong and said, oh, you're using reverse psychology on me. No, he probably would be okay with you killing your daughter. On that note, I want to address rumors that have been happening. There are a lot of rumors about Kiki leaving the show and getting killed by Ryan, being one of his victims. And I, oh, I really don't want the show to go there, honestly. I mean, off the heels of the Me Too storyline, it seems like the worst timing ever. At the same time, they are lining it up perfectly to have Kiki murdered. I mean, Ava has already said that she wants to murder her, which could easily have Ryan set Ava up for murder. We also have Dr. Bench who, when we last seen him, seemed to want to take revenge out on Kiki, so he would be a suspect. And of course it's going to give Maura West some really good material if Kiki does die. I just, I don't want to see Kiki die. And also, in my heart of hearts, I'm still not convinced that Sasha is Nina's daughter. I'm still convinced it's Kiki. So let's talk about that. Nina came face to face with the woman she believes is her daughter. The DNA test says that she is the daughter and they seem to have a lot in common, but there's just something really off about the whole situation. First of all, a couple weeks ago, Valentin was iffy about whether this was true or not, and then all of a sudden he did a complete 180 flip and was like, oh, I'm gonna tell Nina now that that is her daughter before the second results come in, and then the second result confirmed it. But something is fishy there. On top of that, the necklace that Nina has is a necklace that Sasha does not have. So it seems like they're leading up to her not being the daughter. For some reason, I feel like Valentin is behind this and he's manipulating something for some reason, reasons that we don't know yet. I don't know why Valentin and Nina fans can't see him manipulating her at every turn. Like, when he looks at her, all I see is a look of manipulation. Like, he seems smug about something. He, it doesn't seem like love. It seems like manipulation and you're falling for it. That's the look that I find that he gives her. The only one that seems to be able to see through Valentine's manipulations is Laura. She put him in his place. I love, love, love the fact that every time Laura and Valentine come across each other, she practically has him shitting his pants. Laura refuses to forget what Valentine did to her son, which is, you know, obvious because that's her son. He is dead. Yo, when he said Nicholas went out a window, I just lost my shit as much as Laura did. I was like, are you serious? You shot him out of it! If you want Laura to leave you alone and you're so sure that Nicholas might have faked his death, why don't you just help her find out if he truly did? You have the means and the motives to do so. You will have Laura out of your hair forever if you just help her. Just do it. If you're so sure he isn't dead, help her prove it. Laura, of course, has some bigger fish to fry. Kevin is not Kevin. That is not her husband. That is a serial killer and she needs to figure this out soon. Pretty much everyone in Kevin's life can see that there is something really off about him, but there's absolutely no reason to suspect that Ryan is back from the dead. So they're not sure what's going on. This worries me because unless someone goes into Ferncliff and finds Kevin in there, there's gonna be no way to stop Ryan from killing his first victim. Hopefully Laura puts her detective boots on and figures out what's going on because I wanna see Laura and her element again. She is a Spencer after all and she's had many adventures with the Spencer family and this would be the perfect way to bring that side out of her, sans Luke. I mean, he obviously can't fake a cold forever, so she's gonna figure out that something more is going on here. Now let's talk about Laura's daughter, Lulu, for a second because she is in limbo due to Dante being on a mission to find that one guy that almost caused her to drown that we barely remember. All cards on the table, I am not enjoying Lulu. I haven't enjoyed Lulu since Julie Berman played her back in the day. 
because not only is it a different actress playing Lulu in a different way, the character has done a complete 180 switch herself as well. And her being a reporter makes about as much sense as Dante leaving his family to go on a secret mission. It doesn't jive with who we know these characters to be. They need to rectify the storyline and fast. They either need to bring Dante back to Lulu and have Lulu have a different story and try to write her to who she really is, or just have Lulu leave the canvas and meet Dante somewhere and have them run off into the sunset together. Because it's just, it's it's sad to watch. I, I miss my Lulu. I miss her spunk and her sort of, I don't even know, like, her edge, her Luke and Laura edge that is no longer there. She's lost every single part of Lulu that I loved and that upsets me, so, you know, let her go. All right, moving on, let's talk about Oscar for a minute because obviously this is a sad story to tell. He is going down the path that I thought that they would for the story and pushing Jocelyn away because he's dying to, you know, not hurt her. He's being super mean to her and it makes sense that he's doing it, but at the same time, Oscar, when she finds out that you have died of cancer that you kept from her, she's gonna be 10 times more hurt than she would be if she knew by you telling her in advance what was going on. You're not saving anybody any tears, you are just making it worse. I know it hurts and I understand where you are coming from, Oscar, but you need to grow up. You need to man up and own what's going on with you and let the people around you know. They're not gonna treat you like some fragile flower. They're gonna make the most of what life you have left. Also, you need to stop being a jerk to your parents. Drew is already going through some nonsense with the DA. Margot is so hell-bent on taking Sunny and Jason down because of what happened to her father. I mean, she has her dad's grave right next to Morgan's, and on top of that, she is now trying to blackmail Drew into helping her by revealing the fact that she does have the flash drive. If they actually have Drew help her out due to blackmail, it'll be the worst written story ever because Drew can easily go to the police with this. She has stolen property. Or if he can't go because it's technically not his property, he can go to Andre and Andre can go to the police about the stolen property. If y'all actually have Drew help Margot with this, it'll be the most irritating storyline of the year because it doesn't make sense for this to be the route, okay? There are too many ways around this for Drew to go that route. All right, last but not least, let's talk about Nell. She is back, it is time for her trial, and she is just as creepy and manipulative and psychotic as ever. There are people that are so sure that this is gonna be the reveal for Wiley being Michael and Nell's son, but I, <laughs> I am not as hopeful. I feel like they're gonna drag this out as long as they possibly can. I can't believe that Brad actually showed up to the courthouse. I mean, I don't think he was there for the trial, honestly, because he seemed kind of shocked that Nell was there in the first place. So what you doing there, bud? I mean, this is really playing with fire if you did know that this trial was going on today. All that aside, I really hope that Nell doesn't somehow get away with murder. If we had to sit through all of that only for her to somehow get off on a technicality, I'm gonna be pissed. Time to close the chapter on the big old book of GH for good when it comes to that story, okay? So yeah, these past couple of weeks of GH have been really good for me. I really enjoy seeing Jeannie Francis on screen again because I love Laura and I loved seeing Jason and Sam almost make love. I know it was almost, I'll take it. It's been 10 long months, okay? I'll take it. Let's just, you know, keep building from that. And everything in between was so good too. I mean, all the acting has been stellar the last couple of weeks. Everything is flowing quite nicely right now. I just hope that they build up that momentum to really climax these stories to some ultimate highs for the show. They are lining things up to be really exciting soon, so hopefully they manage to follow through with that. What did you guys think of the show the last couple of weeks? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked GHMV, give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. I do these videos every Sunday and I will catch you guys next week.